Aloha. And, uh, you know, I thought it was time. It's always good not to assume. And while I've done a lot of stuff and a lot of people know me, many don't know me. They don't know who I am. They've seen videos. They don't know my name. They've seen video of me. But uh, today I want to give everyone an opportunity to understand who I am, where I'm coming from, and how I roll, as it were. First things first, I, I, was, I was born in California and uh, in the summer of love, 1969, on the day of the fake moon landing. Yes, you heard me right. There's no way we landed there. But of course, I didn't know any of that. For all of my early years, I was like every other red-blooded American patriot. My nation's the greatest. I grew up in SoCal. I was a surfer. I got into all sorts of uh, mischief, as you do as a teenager and a, and a young one in California. And uh, I had a good time, really good time. You know, I, I, I was the kind of kid because my mom gave me so much love, God bless her. My mom, only child. My father, he was uh, abused really badly as a child. He was such a brilliant man intellectually, but he was damaged goods in terms of his ability to love his only son. He never had any other children either. So my mom and my dad had me, and that was it for both of them. And I didn't see a whole lot of my dad. My mom divorced my dad at, at five. And so she was a single mom, and we moved here, there, and everywhere. So I was a gypsy from day one. I, I'm a Celt, Irish family back in Kerry in Ireland. And, uh, you know, but I was a Yank, but I always had that Celt spirit in me. And from a young age, I had the kind of security and love, plus a little extra uh, motivation because daddy didn't love me properly. So that gives you extra motivation if you don't get victimized and become a, a really nasty person. It worked for me because of my mother and the love she gave me. So grew up, barely graduated school because I hated it. I knew it was mind control. I just knew intuitively, like, I'm not bothered about this stuff. And uh, I got into fights as a young kid because I, never, I didn't like bullies. I don't like bullies at all. And by the grace of God, I had enough love and security that I had the ability to kind of push my own boundaries. And if somebody tried to bully me, then no man <laughs> i'm up for it it's i'm game i remember as a kid you know if you had a if you had an issue with someone and it, you know it was a big deal to get into a fight in school so although that did happen with me once a couple times at least um normally if you had a run-in with somebody then it meets you after school meets you after school and there was a park right next to the school so i remember the the adrenaline and just the excitement of it all um, but my gig was I didn't like bullies, and I, I stood up for kids that were being bullied because at a young age I got my confidence, and other kids knew, like, I'm not the one you want to bully or even try to bully. So I went through that whole teenage phase chasing girls and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, um, but always, always with the values that my mother gave me, which were the most beautiful values, just such a loving mother in every way. She was a mother to everybody. And... So I ended up getting a job. I was working from a young age. I, had a, I was mowing lawns at like seven, eight years old with a lawnmower, my own lawnmower. I was uh, doing a paper route at 12, I think I was. I had a dishwashing job at a pizza joint at 15. Um, at 16, 17, I, had, I got a job. Uh, 18, I was a waiter in a dinner cruise in San Diego Bay, which was really great. It was a dude and booze and cruise, you know, where you could actually have some drinks and work and make money, good tips. But then I got a job in a French restaurant called the El Biscocho, uh, a French fine dining, top class, wine stewards, all that. Had the best boss ever, ironically, John Sullivan. He was the maitre d'. I made it to waiter. I loved that job, worked there a year and a half. So moved out of my mom's house at 18. And so I've always been a free bird and a gypsy. And I was watching a movie at 19 years old. I had no plans of the military at all. I watched a movie. You may have seen it. It's called Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> and I think there was part of me that was trying to impress Daddy or just like, oh, you will love me, Daddy. <laughs> because I had no plans. But when I saw that movie, I was like, yeah. That's what I need right there. I, I wanted to become a man. 
And I thought, what, what better? Come on, this ain't just the military. This is the U.S. Marine Corps Infantry. So it was in the first five minutes of that film I decided I'm doing that. And within a month I had enlisted in the United States Marine Corps and I went to MCRD, the Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego. And I was in the infantry. I graduated boot camps, no problems there. A couple little fun stories I'll tell it some other time, but um, no problems passing boot camp with three months. And then I went uh, on leave, had some time, and just you know a week or two, I think. And then I had to report to duty at the School of Infantry, Camp Pendleton, also outside of San Diego. And we did crazy training, six months of training at the School of Infantry. So you become pretty damn hard by the time you come out of there. But when you get to the fleet after that, so that's nine months of training before you actually go out into the fleet. And I went out to 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines. They're known as the Magnificent Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> they got that reputation in Vietnam. You can read about them. And I was a model Marine. I had a perfect physical fitness test one year. That's almost impossible to get. I had a rifle expert, which is the highest award, third, third, uh, third award rifle expert. So every year I qualified, I was the best. And I was carrying the machine gun, the M249 saw, squad automatic weapon. I was a badass, definitely. I knew my stuff. I knew my tactics. Learned a lot about tactics and everything. Anyway, I, uh, I, I was in the Marines one year in, again, in a position of authority. I was assistant team leader in a fire team, which is comprised of four uh, Marines. And I was second in command of that team and, again, carrying the machine gun. And I was excellent at it, excellent. But what happened was a year into, a little over a year into uh, my my time in service, my N my staff NCOs. So these are the badass. These are like gunnery sergeants, staff sergeants, master sergeants. They were in a birthing area on a ship. It was hot. It was the Mediterranean. Long story short, they did something unlawful. They 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 gave an unlawful order, which was a violation of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. It was all to make themselves more comfortable. They were abusing power. Everybody accepted it except one, me. <laughs> so I jumped my chain of command, which is a mortal sin. I reported them for what they uh, weren't allowed to do, which, which they, they ended up getting read the riot act. And they wanted to know who the hell it was. And I believed in honor, integrity, the few, the proud, the Marines. If you're an American, you'd understand this. You can go and watch 1980s commercial for U.S. Marine Corps. You'll see what I'm talking about. And uh, they're special. They're a special breed. They are. Anyway, I jumped my chain of command. And when they found out, oh, my God, did whole holy hell let loose. And they found out. I said it was me. Like, I owned up to it. And when my staff sergeant found out he said bring him here so my squad leader brought me down to some back end corner of the ship i thought they were going to jump me and kill me man throw me overboard or something and i'll never forget his words my name was nichols at the time uh, i changed my name to o'keefe to reflect my irish roots and i am an o'keefe so it's not a false name but anyway my name was nichols i'll never forget his words he said Nichols, in my 17 years in the Marine Corps, you're the biggest piece of shit I've ever known, and I'm going to fry your ass first chance I get. <laughs> he was not joking, boy. And when your boss hates you in a job that you hate, that's one thing. But when you're in the Marine Corps infantry and actually just about to go off to war, and the man who's in charge of you declares his hatred for you, yeah, it becomes a bit of a problem. Now, the thing that really forged me into who I am because I went being, from being the best Marine to the most hated Marine. If you watch Full Metal Jacket, you'll see Private Pyle. At some point, he keeps fucking up on every level. At some point, the platoon, the, the uh, drill instructor who has been punishing Private Pyle then starts to punish the entire platoon to make it clear, you're not helping me teach Private Pyle. That's where they do some things and Private Pyle can't handle it. Anyway, it was... Um, it was more than difficult to, to I, it would be hard to exaggerate how dangerous it was for me. People go overboard on ships. I was on the USS Ponce. Um, you know, the, my leadership hated me and he declared his intent to fuck me right up. 
And then I went off to the first Gulf War. I was in Operation Desert Storm. Thank God I never killed anybody. Thank you, God. But I was there, and I was party to war crimes and crimes against humanity, the highway of death. You can look that up. So I realized that I was fighting in a war, and my leadership hated me. And I was still a good Marine, and I did my job, but it was not comfortable, and I had to look over my shoulders constantly. And boy, oh boy, I had one of two choices, be a victim and whine and cry about it or be a man, stand up like a Marine, quit your bitching, get it done. That's the attitude in the Marine Corps. And uh, so I never called in sick ever in my three years, never called in sick, reported for duty every day. And ultimately um, I went AWOL or absent without leave once when they tried to deprive me of the last chance to see my family before I went off to the war. And I said, fuck you. And I went and saw my family. So that was one of the things they were able to get me on, but I'll be damned before I don't say goodbye to my mother and the ones I love before I set off. So I did, went off to that war. I was a hard man by the time I got out after three years. And I knew I was wrong about the Marine Corps. That was my awakening. That was my red pill. That was Morpheus saying, remember, all I'm offering is the truth. I got the truth from the Marine Corps. I realized the thing that I loved, the thing that I was ready to kill or die for, that thing was not what I thought. What else am I wrong about? What else am I wrong about? I got out of the Marines. I had taken an oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. And so I'll be damned before I dishonor that, man. They took everything away from me, my college fund. I got no benefits, no veterans benefits, nothing for my service in combat. Uh, you know, it, it was, I was hard done by, but again, I ain't no victim. I just became harder. And when I came out, I decided I was wrong about Marines. What else am I wrong about? I studied voraciously. Burying my heart at Wounded Knee, uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X, uh, People's History of the United States, uh, Manufacturing Consent. I read, I read, I read, and I realized everything that we are told is wrong. Everything. And I, I just got addicted to that. And over time, I realized, oh my God, we're going to destroy the world. Like, oh my God. And... When that hit me, I was like, well, that's where my mission was born. And I'm talking my mid, early 20s. When I read a book called The End of Nature by Bill McKibben, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe how everybody was walking around like, you know, we've got all these priorities and all these things, but like, wait, we got a real priority here. We could blow each other up with nuclear weapons. This is, this is more important than like getting the new car or something. And... I literally for the last 30 years was contemplating the solution. How do we stave off these illegal wars, these war crimes, these absolute insanity of crime, uh, poverty, unemployment, uh, pedophilia now? I mean, pedophilia existed then, but boy, oh boy, we're rewarding. We've got pedophiles in government, all over government, Jeffrey Epstein, all of this stuff my mind had been unlocked from the indoctrination because of the Marines, so ironically. So I didn't just follow orders. I did not just follow orders. In fact, I disobeyed an unlawful order according to the Uniform Code of Military Justice, and this sort of gives you my ethos. The law that I took an oath to protect and defend, the U.S. Constitution, those laws exist here in England. They exist in most all Western countries, but what we have is the color of law. And I have seen law and stood for law over and over and over again. No one could say that I called for any unlawful act. But I have said, and I continue to repeat, with regard to my family now in Palestine, having lived there, and that'll be another story. But if I was born in Palestine and I was being genocided, my family was being raped, my land was being stolen, what would I do? I know exactly what I would do. I would fight. I would absolutely fight till death. They would have marked me from a young age. I know this. I absolutely know this. So I'll be damned before I call out those who resist the tyranny that's actually affecting genocide today. No way. That's not part of the solution, turning a blind eye. No, no, absolutely not. And I do. I have solutions. I do. And the powers that be don't like what I have to say and all the media appearances and everything if you a lot of people see me but they don't know my name Ken O'Keefe 
you know, Google me. You'll see a lot of BS, man. My enemies don't want people to know the truth. They say I endorse David Duke on my Wikipedia page. That's not true. I said he changed. He's not the same man. That's far from an endorsement. The uh, Southern Poverty Law Center says a bunch of rubbish about me. That's the Jews and their defamation league. The Anti-Defamation League, which is the defamation league of the Jews, says crap about me. But if you weed through that and you hear the words I'm saying, whether it be now or in all the interviews I've done, Hey man, I'm a very compassionate guy. I'm vegetarian because I don't want to harm people. I'm, uh, I've been standing up for the bullied all my life. I have fought for gypsies. I have fought for the Iraqis when we went there. I did the human shield action. Standing on the Fort Geneva Convention and the need to protect civilians 20 plus years ago I did that. I've lived in Palestine, West Bank and Gaza. And I'll be damned before I sit here, turn a blind eye or just shut my mouth like some coward. Um, and not do what a warrior does, what a man does. So that's sort of who I am and how I evolved, and there's tons of details, and I am planning to write books. Right now, the UK police, they've come after me with the, uh, compl uh, the commu uh, community police support unit. It's a fancy way of saying riot police. They came after me yesterday at a place that I don't live. Um, but in theory, there's, a, there's probably a warrant for my arrest. And this just goes to show, you know. I mean, why am I being chased by cops in this country right now? Why? Why? Because I'm a bad guy? No, no, it's because I'm a good guy. And I'm honoring the law and I'm calling out the treason traitors and the pedophiles in government, whether it be Parliament or the U.S. Congress or pretty much all of the Western world. It's, uh, it's unacceptable. That's, that's, that's my assessment of the world we live in. It is, in its current form, absolutely unacceptable. And if you doubted that for one second, all you'd need to do is visit my family in Gaza. And I'm doing my best to send them as much money as I can to help keep them alive because they're starving. This is not acceptable. It, does, it shouldn't have to happen to you personally to understand that. We should know that. We should know that just by being human. And ironically, it is the Palestinians who are teaching us what it is to be human. I do have a plan. It's called World Citizen. My enemies will turn it into all sorts of things. It's not, but I'll be writing about that. And uh, that's a 17-minute that's a explanation of who I am with a, a whole lot more details that make up a, a Hollywood movie you wouldn't believe. And, and uh, well, I'll save that for another day. God bless you all. God bless Palestine. Never give up. Fight the good fight. Die with your boots on. Give me liberty or give me death. And... Uh, Fuck you, Israel. Fuck you.